I'd be surprised if you could think of a program that did exactly the same thing every time you ran it. So programs quite often need to make a decision about what to do based on various conditions, so the values of variables or what the user's done. So what we're going to have a look in this video is how we do it, go about that. So in my program here, I'm asking the user for a number. So we can obviously enter any number there. And I'm going to get the program to tell the user whether the number they've entered is positive or negative. And just like every other programming language that I can think of, and also uh, spreadsheets, um, decisions are made using the if command. So we can say if, so the number that the user enters is stored in the variable num. So I'm going to say if num is less than 0, i.e. it's negative, so then we use a, a colon. And like most things in Python, we then need to indent what we're going to do. So if the number is negative, uh, we're going to print uh, that's negative. OK, so if I save my program now and I run it, it's going to ask me for a number. And if I say minus 1, it's going to say that's negative. So it's decided whether or not my number is negative and it's displayed uh, an output accordingly. If I run that program now, just have a look at that. What do you think it's going to do if my um, result uh, of my number that I enter isn't negative? Well, let's have a look. So give me a number and if I say 3, now that's not negative. So it doesn't output anything. So, and that's because I haven't told it to. So my condition is here, if n my number is less than zero, print that's negative, but there's, n there's nothing else in my program, so it doesn't do anything else. So we can have alternatives. So if we want to have an alternative, we can use else, which means otherwise. So if you know this is the case, then do that. Otherwise, do something else. So what I can do is uh, this. If I can spell positive correctly, there we go. So now I'm saying, give me a number. If the number's less than zero, I'm printing that's negative. Otherwise, I'm printing that's positive. So let's run that and have a look, see what happens. So give me a number, minus one. So that still works. That's saying it's negative. If I run that program again and give a positive number, so give me a number five. Uh, it's saying that's positive. Okay, so does that cover uh, every eventuality? Well, I don't want to get into a debate about the value of zero, but um, I suppose we might want to have a third condition, uh, whether it's neither positive nor negative, but zero. Unfortunately, if um, only uh, determines between sort of kind of two opposites, so it's either less than zero or it's not. What we can do, though, is we can combine multiple if statements. Then we can say else. We could say if uh, number is equal to zero. So remember, if we're checking for equality, we use two equals uh, symbols when we're using Python. So if it's uh, equal to zero, we'll print, and again, we need further indentation. So we'll print that's zero. So we can have ifs inside ifs, if you like, and then else. So a third condition. So we know once we get into this bottom half that it's not negative. So once it's not negative, the two options are zero or positive. So now uh, we've got a program that should be able to cope with all eventualities. If I was testing this thoroughly, I would enter uh, numbers of all types. So I would uh, run that program and I would try a negative number, or the, the largest negative number possible. So that's negative. I would try zero. So give me a number 0, and that's saying it is 0, so that's correct as well. And my third possibility, which is that we have a positive number, and uh, I'll give a positive number, and it's telling me that it's positive. So that's good. So we can use this uh, within a program. So we've looked at printing and um, repetition previously. So I've just, uh, here's, a, here's a program that will print uh, times tables. So if you look at the top line, it asks uh, the user which times table they want. Um, and then it counts up to 12, starting at 0, because uh, 
primary children these days seem to start their tables at zero rather than one. And then it prints uh, the n, which is the number from naught to 12. So the first time round, it'll be that will be zero. And then I'm printing an x to represent multiplication. And t is the table we're doing. So if we're doing the two times table, the first time it will be zero times two, and then in equals, and then um, it will multiply those two numbers together to give the actual answer. Notice that I'm using the brackets and um, forcing the numbers to be strings. Um, you'll, you'll see why in a minute. So if I run this program now, what it will do is it will display the times table that I give it. So I've asked for the two times table, it will print uh, the two times table. But what about if we wanted to turn that into a test? So if you had a, a younger brother or sister who was learning their times tables at junior school and you wanted to test them on that, um, we could uh, turn, turn this into a into a test rather than a display. So uh, if we change the text of that, so to be tested on, okay, and then we'll count up to 12 in the same way. Um, but the reason that I've constructed my print like this is I can I can swap that then for input. And input works in the same way as print, so it constructs the question uh, based upon the variables. So I just need to add a little bit more, don't I? So I need to just add um, what is to the start of my question, and then I'll add uh, a question mark at the end. In fact, I don't need the answer, obviously, uh, if, I'm at, if I've got a test. So I'll, we actually need a little bit less. and um, and then I'll put a question mark on the end because it is a question. So I'm then so I need to store that, um, and I'll store that in a variable called answer. And then what we're going to do? Well, we want to see if they've got it right, don't we? So um, and we'll give them a score. So at the top of my program, we'll start off with a score of zero, which is what you'd expect. Um, I'm using a var variable called score. So I've asked them. Um, what that answer is, but I need to check. So I'm going to say if answer is equal to, well, the actual answer is going to be n times t. So we were displaying that in the first version of the program, um, but now we're not. So if it's uh, n times t, so n is uh, the, how far we've got, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., and t is the table we're doing. So the first time around, 0 times t, 2 will be uh, 0, for example. And if they give the right answer, then what can, what will we want to do? We want to increase their score. So score plus equals 1, which remember is shorthand for score, equals score plus 1. And then, um, I suppose when they get to the end of the program, we might want to print their score. So uh, we could print uh, u, uh, u scored. and then uh, their actual score. Okay, so if I run this now, instead of printing the uh, table, it's going to ask me what the results are. So I'm going to go to run that module. So which table would I like to be tested on? I'll be tested on the twos. Uh, what's naught times two? Naught. Uh, what's one times two? So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. So just checking it goes up to the right number. And it's telling me now that I've scored 13, which is the maximum possible for 0 to 12 is 13 different numbers, isn't it? So that's that's OK. But if I hadn't got full marks, then would I be happy with that? I'd want to know which ones I got wrong, wouldn't I? So I'm going to just reduce that number just to make it easier to uh, test the, the, the program and so you don't have to watch me type in a load of numbers I'm just going to get it to do um, fewer numbers okay and then so with an if you can do multiple things so if I wanted to do something else I can just add another line so if the answer is right so if the answer is equal to um, n times t we're going to add one to the score, but we could also give a bit of feedback so they know which ones um, they've got right. Okay, so if you've 
got it right, you'd, you'd probably want to know. You'd also want to know, if you got it wrong, what the answer really was. So you could do something like this. You could say, sorry, the actual answer was, and then you could display what the actual answer was, because we know what it is. It's n times t. Okay, so now if I run that program, what it'll do is ask me those questions and it'll tell me whether I got them right or wrong. So I've reduced the number of times it does it, but obviously I can put that back uh, to going up to 12 at the end. So I'll be tested on twos again. So what's 0 times 2? Well, I'll get that right. So well done, that's correct. What's 1 times 2? Uh, is that 1? And no, it's telling me that it's 2. So, um, and then I'll just carry on. So 4, 6, Eight, and now we can see that the scoring is working as well. So I got um, got one of those wrong. The five answers got one wrong, so I scored four. So is there anywhere else we could use a decision in there? Well, actually, we we could comment on the score, couldn't we? Um, so we, what we could say is if score equals well, I'm only going up to five in my case. So if score equals five, then I could print. Uh, full marks Ooh, well done so if I run that program now let's see what happens Ooh, made a mistake in there aha uh -huh. so I forgot my double equal sign so if we're, check if we're checking for equality uh, we need two equal signs one equal sign is when we set it equal to a particular value as we've done here at the top and here with our input so if I run that now so I'll do my twos again so what's naught times two is naught uh, what's so two four six eight okay and I scored five four marks well done so just run that again to make sure that only appears when I do get full marks so um, Let's run that again. So let's do threes for a change. So 0 times 3 is 3. Uh, 1 times 3 is that 1? Uh, oh no, it's not it's 3, of course. So 6, uh, 9, and 12. Now this time I didn't get full marks, I've got that one wrong. So it's telling me my score, but it's not telling me that I got uh, full marks. So this is how we make a decision in Python, sometimes called selection on some exam courses. Um, but I think I would call it a decision. So we use the if command and we test some sort of condition and then the actions that we want to uh, do if that's true we need to indent them and then we go back uh, towards the left uh, when we want to carry on and we can test for a particular condition and we can do an action if that's true but we can also do an alternative if it's not true so it's either or and sometimes we can have multiple steps and sometimes we can have another decision inside the first one so it, like in the first case where we had uh, positive negative or zero and we can use that throughout the program so I think what we've now covered variables uh, repetition with for and while and decisions are probably uh, the most common things that you'll use in programming